Anyway, today's video is going to be for those who are new to the idea of virtual training. I receive a lot of questions asking that they're having their training at home, so what they should do and how do they go about it or what to expect for those types of training. So this video is for you. <laughs> begin please remember to subscribe if you haven't yet and if you're new here my name is Rhea and on this channel I talk about getting hired and thriving in the BPO industry so if you want to be part of the community just click the red subscribe button down below now let's begin what is a virtual training to those who are new simply virtual training means an online training that you will do basically anywhere but at this time since we are in the middle of a pandemic most likely your virtual training will be done by you at home or maybe by your trainer at home as well or in the office with limited people we don't know but the idea is you're going to take your training online and this is not just self-paced or self-directed learning wherein you're going to take a course on your own and then you will be left alone well, perhaps in some parts of your training, you will be asked to take CBTs or what we call computer-based training. Those are self-paced training. But for the most part of your virtual training, you will have an instructor who will be your trainer for the entire training period. This is essentially going to be like a classroom training, only that it is done online. So all of the modules, all of the things that trainees learn in the classroom are still going to be the same. But then again, it's done online. Okay, I keep repeating that it's done online because it is. When it comes to advantages, what I can say is that first, it is definitely more convenient because as we are still in the middle of a pandemic, you don't have to go to the office. It's safer for you to stay home and you will still be learning the same thing when you are in the classroom. And to me personally, it will be easier to just wake up, take a bath, eat your breakfast, and then in a few minutes, you're ready to take your training. On the other hand, there are also some disadvantages or let's just say challenges of taking the virtual training. First, there will be some sort of a barrier because your trainer is on another side and you are on another side and the barrier is your computer or the technology. And as you know, technology can fail um, and you will actually need a strong internet connection and bigger bandwidth because most likely you'll be taking the training for the entire day. Sadly, here in the Philippines, we don't have the best internet connection. It's very unstable. And when you get a uh, power interruption or maybe when your internet connection gets cut off, then it's going to be inconvenient for you compared to when you're in a classroom training. You don't have to worry about that. Also, there can be a lot of distractions when you are taking the training at home, obviously because you're not in a proper um, office setup and some of you may really need to carve some space for the training so most likely you will not be able to concentrate at some point of your training because of all the noise and uh, maybe family members calling you to do stuff and you know this is the reason that I'm making this video because I want to share with you some best practices for you to be able to make the most out of your virtual training so let's go to the tips now my first tip is a no-brainer, and again, this is for newbies. If you're already an experienced agent, then probably you already know this, but I'm still gonna continue. You will have to have at least a corner in your house where you can concentrate and you can you know, have peace to take your training. You will have to tell your family members or whoever it is are in your house that you are taking an actual training and that it is a real job only that you are working from home at the moment this way you will be able to eliminate as much distractions as possible compared to when you are just setting up um, in your bedroom well it, in your bedroom is okay as long as you have a table but say you're taking your training on your actual bed and that's going to be a distraction because at some point you will get sleepy and since you're already on your bed it's not impossible that you will doze off in the middle of your training and that's not good so you'll have to be up and about 
up and about. You have to be active uh, and really have a space to take the training. My second tip is to really check your systems or the technology that is um, needed for the virtual training. Most likely, um, your company or your account will have its own guidelines. But nowadays, a lot of virtual trainings are done through Zoom, GoToMeeting, or Google Meet, Skype. There are so many other communication tools. And you don't have to decide on that. You just have to follow what your trainer tells you and then download or install that application on your computer. In this case, um, if you're applying at this time, it is really already imperative that you at least have internet connection at home or a computer or a laptop. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to continue with your virtual training without those. Now, the good thing is that some companies I have heard from some people in our online community would actually provide computers um, temporarily to be used for training and even an internet allowance. I hope that all other companies would be able to provide that because that's really helpful, especially for those who are still starting to apply for a job and don't really have budget to to, um, spend for technology, which is understandable. It's the reason why we're applying for a job, right? To earn money. And once you do, um, you'll be able to invest more in uh, your gadgets, necessary you know, technology, such as computers or a laptop, computers, well, <laughs> computer, laptop, or your um, internet connection. I think it's really a great investment because you know, we never know when we need to do this at home. Before we continue, I do want to let you know that I've been working with Multiply Me to strengthen my drive of helping people get hired and thrive in the BPO industry. Multiply Me is a BPO company that provides career opportunities to Filipinos here in the Philippines. If you are looking for job security and valuable benefits, while working at the comfort of your home, then do sign up for our Future Opportunities program. Just click the link on the description below and it will lead you to your Facebook Messenger. To know more about how it works, check out the card linked up on this video. Now talking about system requirements, technology and all of those things, you also have to have a headset and a microphone or at least a built-in mic on your headset it is just so much easier to concentrate when only you can hear that and you'll be able to block out the noise in your environment although I understand that wearing a headset for the entire time of your training may not be that comfortable or convenient so you can remove it from time to time but at least for the parts we really need to concentrate then a headset and a microphone will do wonders. And if you don't have the budget for it now, then that's okay, just work with what you have. If you don't have any yet, uh, then okay, we, we can't do anything about it. But once you have the budget, then it is best to invest on budget-friendly um, headset and microphone as well. Now, my fourth tip is to block out your calendar, meaning that when you are attending a virtual training at home, you have to make sure that it's on your calendar and that no other activities will be scheduled during those times and dates. So if your training will go from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., that's a full-time shift of training, which is really common, then you should block out that entire time just for the training alone. And like what I mentioned earlier, inform your family members that you're doing a real job here. Another thing is that please don't forget to take a break. I mean, it's an online training and you're working from home, but still uh, sometimes it's hard to draw the line between personal and work. So you might forget that you might need to take a break and your trainer might forget that you need to take a break. So I hope that um, you'll be more comfortable to ask for a break from your trainer if your trainer indeed forgets that you need to take a break. <laughs> Next tip is remember to ask questions. I know it's an online training, there's a barrier, so it's easy to be silent, it's easy to hide behind the camera because perhaps you're not really required to turn on your camera, it can take so much bandwidth, but please be proactive of your own learning. Um, make sure to ask questions if there's anything that is unclear to you 
instead of waiting for the time when you're already starting to work and then asking that question. But please go easy on the chat room if ever. Um, I feel like as a speaker or as a presenter, and I've done this so many times before, the chat room can be you know, very disruptive to the discussion. So I suggest you don't mind the chat room if your trainer does not say so, if your trainer does not say to check the chat room, but you may want to just type in your question and leave it there for the trainer to answer at a later time. But don't engage in chit chats while you are having your virtual training because that's not gonna help you understand your lessons. <laughs> and lastly, uh, once you already know what tool to use for your virtual training, for example, you're going to use Zoom communications tool, then take the time to research how to use the platform. There's so many resources online on how to use the communication tools such as Zoom, Skype, and Google Meet, whatever you want to use, or Microsoft Teams. That is because it will be easier for you to um, navigate and everything will just, you know, be more convenient if you know how to use the tool instead of just waiting for your trainer to tell you how to use it. Just be proactive to learn more about what you're going to use in the virtual training and then do your homework. That's it. If you need to have more tips on how to pass your training, then I already have a video about that. I'm going to link it up here so you can check it out after this video. And that's about it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. As usual, please go ahead and subscribe uh, if you haven't yet. Like and share this video. And I'll see you in my next one. Thanks so much and stay safe.